Welcome to In Pursuit 360. And today we're going to be talking about firearms training while you're in the academy, right? So this is another video in that series of what to expect or what to do or how can I better be prepared for the academy. So yeah, that's it. Firearms in the academy. Here we go. All right, so here we go. So let's talk about firearms training in the academy. So you have to remember, no matter what your personal experience is with firearms, when you enter the academy, they are going to be teaching to the most novice person in the class. So you can have somebody that has really no or very little experience with firearms to somebody that's been shooting firearms for like decades. Um, and it's not going to matter. They're going to start everybody off in the same place. So be patient. I always tell everybody, look, the moment you think you know everything about something, it's time to just quit and get out, right? So even same thing's even true with firearms. Even today, I still go to different firearms training functions so I can learn something new. There's always something new. There's a tweak to the grip. There's a better way for trigger control or trigger press. There's, um, you know, there are all kinds of things, you know, improvements in stance and, and uh, follow through techniques and, and whatever, right? There's a difference between qualify shooting and combat shooting. And, and even some of the, all the fundamentals stay the same, but some of the fundamentals get tweaked a little bit, or you can modify them based on whatever combat situation you're in. So there's a lot that goes into to shooting a firearm and it's, it's, it's a tool that you hopefully will never, ever, ever use while you're out there on the street. I've drawn mine hundreds of times. Never had to pull the trigger. Only one time that I ever think I was going to pull the trigger, um, but never had to pull the trigger. Um, so I got lucky. 21 years, never fired my, my duty weapon. So um, thank goodness for that, right? I'm, I'm grateful. So anyway, so when you're going to the academy, either if you want to prepare to go to the academy... Um, of course, yeah, you can go to the range and you can shoot and you can send rounds down range. Maybe you can pay for some private instruction, which might not be a bad idea. At least you have somebody there with you, um, as long as they know what they're doing. Um, but here's the thing. Everybody seems to think practice makes perfect, right? Practice makes perfect. And when I played football, my dad told me that's a bunch of crap. Practice does not make perfect. If you keep practicing the wrong thing, you're never going to get perfect. Just because you do the wrong thing over and over again doesn't mean you're suddenly going to be good, right? So it's perfect practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So you really got to get your fundamentals down, right? So can you do this at home? And you can, right? So there are a lot of things that um, that we can talk about. There's there's stance, right? And it talks, it start from the interview stance, which is how in law enforcement, Anytime you encounter somebody, you should be in what's a basic interview stance. Well, the basic interview stance is really a very good base stance for firearms, right? All you really need to do based off of an interview stance, right? Sh feet shoulder width apart. Um, you take your strong foot or your weapon side foot and you drop it back just a little bit. And that way, when you're talking to somebody, you turn that body and it takes that firearm on your hip and moves it just a little further away. Just that little bit of extra reaction time. Uh, which is very similar to your firing stance. The only thing you're going to do is if you draw your weapon and have to fire is you're going to kind of bend those knees a little bit. You're going to get a little bit of bend at the waist, a little aggressiveness, and you're going to get 75% of that weight up on the balls of your feet, right? Nose over toes, weight forward. That helps absorb that recoil and get multiple rounds on target. So anyway, your stance is something you can practice at home. Um, if you have your own holster or if you have a duty weapon in a holster, you can practice your draw. Please, please, please. Make sure that your firearm is empty. And as long as we're talking about firearms and we're going to start actually talking about handling a firearm, let's talk about those four cardinal safety rules real quick. I've done a video on this. I've done a short, but let me just go ahead and tell you real quick. Again, number one, assume all weapons are loaded. Two, never aim at anything you don't intend to destroy. In our line of work, destroy, maim, or kill. Three, keep your finger off the trigger and high on the slide until you're ready to fire and you know that that round is going to impact the target that you want it to. And number four, be aware of your target, its backstop, and beyond. You're responsible for every single round that comes out of that weapon. All right, so that's it. Four cardinal safety rules. So things that you can practice at home. Today, we're going to talk about one particular skill, right? And that is, let's talk about trigger reset. 
right? Trigger reset. This is one that I didn't get taught until much later in my career. Matter of fact, I never even heard about it while I worked for the sheriff's office for 13 years. I heard about it when I did nuclear power plant security um, for a, a security company that had the contract at a nuclear power plant. Uh, trigger reset is really a big, big deal. So here we go. Glock firearms, Glock 19. So we rack it multiple times, lock that slide to the rear. I'm gonna visually and physically inspect it. Check that mag well. I'm gonna look away. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna check it one more time. And yes, my weapon is safe and clear. And even though I know it's safe and clear, I am in a safe setting here. There is nothing here that I can damage or destroy that I'm not willing to destroy. But my firearm is completely empty. There is no live ammunition in this room. And the only magazine I have has dummy rounds in it, right? Dummy rounds. You want some dummy rounds to practice with, they're in the link down below. All right, here we go. So trigger reset. Now on a Glock, I can do this because I don't have to have a magazine in the weapon to practice, right? So in other words, when I let that slide go forward and I go to press that trigger, let's see if you can hear this click. All right, pretty loud click, right? So here we go. So after you fire that round, of course your slide is gonna react. Now watch what happens. Now watch and listen to that finger. Watch and listen, watch and listen. Here you go, let's get this in the middle. Watch and listen. That's it. The trigger's ready to go, watch. And let it out till it clicks. Can you practice that at home? Yes, you can practice that at home. Now, what does this do for you? So after the gun fires, look, if you're one of those ones and you're just learning how to shoot and you automatically let that finger come all the way out, look at all that extra travel, right? Watch, click. And now watch all the extra travel in the trigger, watch. Did you see all that? That's a lot of movement. Now in order to fire the next round, I have to make that trigger travel all the way back again. Instead of just... The idea is the more you have to let, the more you let that trigger travel and the more you have to press it back again, the better chance you have, and see I'm getting my own head out of the way, better chance you have is you press that trigger of the gun kind of wiggling, the gun kind of wiggling, the gun kind of wiggling. Now at two or three yards, that's not gonna mean much. You get to 10 yards or 15 yards, that little wiggle is gonna end up making that firearm, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna end up with a shot looks like you're shooting a shotgun, okay? So this is something you can practice at home is this trigger reset. When you're talking about placing multiple rounds on target quickly or minimizing minimizing that sight, right? So you get your rear sight, your front sight. You want this to stay perfectly the same. So after you fire, bang, as it settles back in, you, you want minimal movement so you can maintain this while you press that trigger. So the less that trigger moves, the less likely this is to move. So you need to concentrate on that. So this, is a skill you can practice at home. Now, uh, let's see, my work right now, that I'm the place I'm working at, Kerry Smith & Wesson MMPs, they won't fire that way. The magazine's gotta be in the gun in order for the trigger to pull. So I would recommend, again, that's where these little training rounds come in perfect, right? So if I load my magazine up with those, right? And then I can press, release, Oh, there went that training round. Look, that doesn't really even matter, does it? And then click. Oh, there's training rounds coming out. You know, the sad thing is, is I got to find them all and pick them up. And look, now I'm empty. Oh, now I'm empty. Guess what I can practice? Reload. All right, that's another video. So there you go. Practice at home. Get yourself some of these dummy rounds if you already own a firearm. Hey, if you're already active on the street, you can practice this stuff at home too. The, the one training that officers really don't get enough of, well, is any, to be quite honest with you, but firearms training. Firearms training. The one thing that's going to save your life or somebody else's and, and you go qualify twice a year and maybe get a little extra training 
you can train yourself at home, right? You can do some of these things on your own. And I'll have more firearms videos. I'll even get us out on the range and, and we'll do some recording stuff out there too. Um, and some demonstrations and things like that. Things that you can work on. I'll even set up so that you can do a, um, we'll be able to do, you know, we'll go over stance and, and stuff like that. Um, I do have another channel called Spartan Training Systems. If you go over there, I have a very detailed video that goes into grip. It's a good, uh, it's a good two-handed grip, right? Where you bring in that second hand and you really get all that meat on that gun where it really helps to, to lock everything in. So, yeah, I mean, you don't see a whole lot of the, the, the grip on the gun, right? Because that good thumbs forward grip. So, anyway, go on over there, check that out. Um, and, yeah, we'll get into it some more. So, yeah, when you go to the academy, be prepared. You're going to end up shooting a gun, um, and it goes bang. Uh, and, and some of you are like, well, duh, no kidding if I'm going to be a cop. But you would be surprised how many people get in there, and it's like, ooh, I kind of, like, didn't really think about that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you got to carry a gun and you have to know how to shoot it and you'll have to train in it and it's going to go bang and um, it may startle you at first, but you're going to have to figure out some way to get over it. If you go to the range and practice before you go to the academy and that, that bang kind of startles you, here's what I would recommend. Put about 10 rounds in that magazine, aim at the target and just pull them, shoot them as fast as you can. Bang, 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 bang. Get that bang out of your system. Know it's going to go bang. That's what it's meant to do. It's completely natural. So there you go. All right. So that's a little bit on firearms preparing for the academy. And uh, and yeah, we'll get into another topic later. So don't forget, hey, subscribe down below. Don't forget, give me that thumbs up. Hit that bell notification. You know when the next video comes out. And we'll be seeing you again real soon on In Pursuit 360. In the meanwhile, stay safe out there.